this thing has been there for over 10 years. Don't we have any sensible hearted people who are in position and in place who can think? So I will not talk about adultery because all our leaders are adulterers. I didn't say, I am not missing words. You know, I just missed my statement. I did not. All our leaders are adulterers. No, not some. All. I didn't miss the English. Yeah, more and more now you are adulterers. When we say adultery, we are not only talking about the moral adultery. The moment I have this microphone, you don't want, you have, I have this, you have the same. You don't want yours, you want mine. That's adultery. It does not only constitute to covetousness. Good morning to all of you. John chapter 12 verses 20 and 21 is our foundation for life. I would love to read to you here in John, the 12th chapter, the 20th and 21st verses. The Bible said there were certain Greeks among them that came up to worship at the feast. The same therefore came to Philip, which was a bedside of Galilee, and desired him, saying, Sir, we want to see Jesus. The same therefore came to Philip, which was a bedside of Galilee. They desired him, saying, Sir, we want to see Jesus. I haven't read you that. Let me read Luke chapter 21, verses number 34, 35, and 36. The Bible said, take heed to yourselves. Lease at any time your hearts. Be overcharged with suffering and drunkenness and the curse of this life. And so that they come upon you. And a worse for us is near. It shall come upon all them that dwell on the face of the whole earth. Watch ye therefore and pray always. That you may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. Watch ye therefore and pray always that ye may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. I have themed my series and this is the fifth edition. I have themed it. Error of Balaam and this is the fifth edition that I'm doing this morning. I have talked about so many errors that the modern day believer have entangled themselves in. And ladies and gentlemen, I am speaking to only the wise this morning because they are the only group of people that can be able to understand the testimony of Christ and uh, the word of the Lord. It is only the wise. Having said that, I'm also talking to the Christian who has taken the the instruction of Christ in Luke chapter number 13 and verse number 24 to strive to enter into the straight gate. Striving to enter into the straight gate. Because many people are making an attempt, but Jesus himself is saying that they will not be able. In other words, there are people that are going to make a wasted effort. It's the truth. Is a truth. Two in a heart. Be a back with us about him. Seriousness. Be serious. So many Christians are not serious people. They are sorry, no, I don't know if they are good. I made a search into the word of the Lord and I came to a realization before I allowed you to take a seat. I came to a realization that there, are, there is an exploration of four kingdoms, four different kinds of kingdoms in the word of the Lord. The first one is in Daniel chapter 4 and verse number 17. Daniel the 4th chapter, the 17th verse. The Bible said that this matter is by the decree of the watch. Can you change as young man? Go to the place where I have too many scriptures this morning. Go to the, quickly do that change for me. This matter is by the decree of the watchers and the demand by, by the word of the holy ones to the intent that the living may know that the most high he rules in the kingdom of man. So the first kingdom that I saw in the exploration of the word of the Lord is the kingdom of man. In the kingdom of man, when a man marries a woman, he puts his name on the woman. 
It may me papa a woman or say no. Say me yo or ba. Would you wusu a ube yi me papa or say not to watch you? Now would the woo wusu not to me so. It is. It works in the kingdom of men. In the kingdom of men, there are transactions, and they have something called money, which is, you know, a legal tender. It only works in the kingdom of men. It's in the kingdom of men. But I like the interesting part that follows. And he said, God gives the kingdom of men to whomsoever he wills, because he rules in the kingdom of men. He has rulership in the kingdom of man. And the Bible said he will set the, the basis, the lowest people, he will set them on high. The first thing, you may be seated whilst you take your notes. Interestingly, you know, in uh, Matthew chapter 20, I think it's Matthew chapter 12 and verse number 25. Let's read 25 and 26. Matthew chapter 12 verses number 25. And the Bible said that Jesus knew their thought and said to them, every kingdom that is divided against itself is brought to desolation. And uh, every city or house divided against itself will not stand. But look at verse number 26. Interestingly, he said, if Satan can cast can can cast out if Satan cast out Satan, his he is divided against himself. How then can his kingdom stand? That means that Jesus is making a public acknowledgement and announcement that Satan has a kingdom. Satan, he has a kingdom. Look at Luke chapter 10. And verse number 9, Luke the 10th chapter, I'm talking about the third kingdom. You know, Luke chapter number 10, the Bible said, Heal the sick that are daring and say unto them, The kingdom of God is come nigh unto you. That's another kingdom we are talking about. This is the kingdom that the believer strives into. This is that kingdom. But interestingly also, he talks about the last kind of kingdom in Luke chapter number 4. And from verse number 6, he mentions another different kingdom over the Luke chapter number 4 and verse number 6. And the devil said unto him, all power, all, all, all this power will I give you and the glory of them for that is delivered unto me and whosoever I will give it. In the seven verse the Bible said if thou therefore will worship me all this shall be yours. Maybe let's go uh, up a little bit. Let's read from verse number five and bring it down so for the sake of understanding. And the devil taking Jesus up to a high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of this world. So, Daniel chapter number 4 verse number 17 is talking about the kingdom of men, number 1. Number 2, the kingdom of God is outlined in uh, Luke chapter 10 and verse number 9. The kingdom of God. Number 3, Matthew chapter 12 and verse number 26. The kingdom of the devil. Jesus, it is Jesus that declared that the kingdom of the, the devil has a kingdom. And then the last one, which is in Luke chapter number 4 and verse number 6. The kingdoms of this world. As a matter of fact, it's verse 5. The kingdoms of this world. So there are four kinds of kingdoms we interact with on our daily basis and we do not even, we do not even um, um, possibly notice it, but it, it is, you know, all around us. There are four different kinds of kingdoms that every day, whether you are a believer or not, whether you are an atheist, an idol worshiper, a Buddhist, a Hindu, a Muslim, it, it does not matter, a Christian, it does not matter. You interact with four different kinds of kingdoms on a daily basis. I'm talking about error of Balaam. 
I'm still talking about the arrow of Balaam. So Paul the apostle in his entreaties in Romans chapter 12 and verse number 1 and 2 he started talking about a revelation that is in God's word. And he said, I beseech you therefore brethren by the message of God that you present your body a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God which is your reasonable service. But when he got into verse number 2 he said, but be, do not be conformed to the pattern of this world, but be ye transformed by the renewal of your mind that you may be able to prove what is good acceptable and the perfect will of God but I want you to know your mind must go through transformation your mind must go through renewal and uh, why because the world is a system and not just you know it's a system and even builds from a system to a kingdom the world becomes a kingdom and so James was telling the believers, you pray but you do not receive answers because you pray amidst James chapter 4 and verse number 3. You ask but you do not receive because you pray amidst this particular this particular verse of scripture. Let us read this in different versions of the scripture. Look at this. It said when you ask, you do not receive it because your motives are bad. I look carefully, McCaffrey at Alabaster, and I realize that so many people have been in Alabaster for over 10 years, 20 years, even, you know, some of the people are the people we started with, but when I look at their lives, I do not see any proof that they have been with God or with Christ. Because their motives are bad. Bad motives. Bad, bad motives because you ask for things to use for your own pleasures today in my series I will subtitle it or I will sub theme it the error of worldliness worldliness is an arrow dog that has crept into the house of God worldliness have come into the house of God to the work of God now what is worldliness if I should describe it because possibly I would take it as worldliness is one of the things that cannot be defined so let me describe it worldliness is the contamination that comes to fashion Music, lifestyle number three, and number four, mindset. Fashion. You said that here, yeah, Nipesha and all that. And now I'm looking at the Christians are bringing the world into the house of God. Trend. If you want me to use another word for fashion, it's trend. The trends. That goes on in the world. I thought that if a man is born again, he's a new creation. All things passes away. Everything becomes new. Listen, if you are sitting here with the kingdom of Christ uh, as an end in your mind, as the place of destination, then I want to tell you, it is not a word of mouth. They call heaven. It's not just a word of mouth. I'm serious. Oh, it can be a word of mouth. It surely cannot be a word of mouth. People are going to understand and come to a realization that the effect is so near. I want to congratulate everybody who was called to the bar last Friday. You know, all the new lawyers, let me congratulate you and salute God for you, especially my general manager, Mr. Kennedy Asantio, said, Now you are a lawyer. You know, Kennedy Asantiose. Congratulations to all of you. Apostle Oben, junior brother, who is uh, the resident pastor of their church, also was called to the bar. And I could see so many young ladies, young men, you know, who have been called to the bar as lawyers. But then, at the background or the backstage, there are people who were rejected, who were declined. And the, you know, Ghana Legal Council or whatever, you know, the appointing body was talking about that there are people that were refused, declined. They rejected them. They did not call them to the bar because they did not meet the criteria of morality and good character. 
Lawyer for a more good character. Really? Me nim lawyer for be bida wo mu suba ye kan kan. E was a much your license for you on sir. Return them back from the bar to the zungo. Yeah, to the community. Send them to go and learn morality. Send them to the church to go and learn morality. Lawyer for ne kura wo mu so mu pe suba papa. And we'll be there shed the white week. They said they are looking for that. How much more? The children of God. People who call themselves the children of God. Let's say, for instance, that I am a child of the president, His Excellency Nana Ekufuado, and I go about misbehaving. It will not be me that that taint or dent comes to. It will be the president of Ghana. If my wife starts misbehaving, they will not target to her name. They will target to Kofi Udru. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They will target to Kofi Udru. I remember when, uh, you know, the Lord used me to address few issues. And then uh, the first question that came, this guy is too vociferous and too courageous for our liking. Whose son is he? They were not referring to my biological parents. They were referring to who does he submit to spiritually? Who, whose son is he? Because they want to put the dent and the responsibility not on him himself. But to whom he submits to, you know, if it is Reverend Steve and Stanley Mensah's son, then let's go and blame them. If he, he is uh, Dr. Christy Dotete's son, then let's hold Dr. Christy Dotete responsible. Morality. A lawyer for. Now they are telling the lawyers, before we call you to the bar, we want to have your social media handles. Twitter, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook. We want to know. Then we will determine whether you are qualified, eligible for to wear the white wig and that black cassock or not. Whether to come to court and address an honorable court of Jews' redemption. They want to know before oh really that even lawyers have a standard. How much more God? The Bible said if a man runs or contends in a race, he does not win except he runs according to the rules. That means that in every game there are rules. Basketball has five players. Football has 11. Every game has their rules. I cannot, can you just imagine 22 men on a field or a pitch chasing one ball? That is the rule. The day I bring two balls, pep, it is against the rules. It is against the rules. Whilst we are playing, you know, the keeper can catch the ball with or keep the ball with his hands. But the moment a player does that, it is against the rules. It is against the rules. You know, when I look at the Old Testament and I look at his word, and then I read, he said, and the Lord speak all these words, Exodus chapter number 20 and verse number 1, 2. You know, it goes down. He said, and the Lord spoke all these words. He says, I am the Lord in the verse number 2, who brought you out of Egypt where you were slaves. Thou shall have, you know, worship no other gods before me, King James. He, you know, he goes and says, interestingly, thou shall make, and thou shall not make unto me any graven image or, or any likeness of anything that is in the heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or, you know, that is in the water or under the earth. In the fifth verse, he said, thou shalt not bow yourself down to them nor serve them for I, the Lord your God, I am a jealous God visiting the iniquity of the fathers unto the children, unto the third and fourth generation of them 
that hate me. In the next verse, he said, you know, and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. In the seventh verse, he said, thou shalt, you know, not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. And here he was speaking to us, a royal priesthood, a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people. You know, he was speaking to us, you shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain, for God will not hold guiltless anybody that takes his name in vain. In the next verse, he says, remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. He goes to the next verse and says, six days thou shalt labor and do all thy work. And then in the seventh day is a Sabbath unto the Lord and thou shalt do no serial work. You know, you and your son, your daughter, your maid servant, your master men servant, your cattle, your stranger that is in your case. He goes into the next verse and says, for six days the Lord made the heaven and the earth and the sea and all that is in them and rested on the seventh day wherefore the Lord has blessed that day and made it holy yeah he had hallowed it in the middle to our verse go he said honor your father and your mother that your days the Christians don't respect this verse this particular verse Honor your father and your mother that your days may be prolonged in the land. The worldliness will not allow us to do that, especially when there is a prophecy and the prophet is trying to connote or imply that your mother or father is a witch. Then, but the Bible didn't say is that when your mother is a witch, you don't honor them. Your mother can be a wancher. Your mother can be a witch. Your father can be a wizard. As a matter of fact, you know, if your father is a fetish priest, I will not stop your father from holding your hand and bringing you to your wedding day. I won't stop your father. That's who he is. That's who he is. Yeah. would decide whether to go with those or can kind of body and all and now say to become a new creation no, that is in Christ Jesus it that decision will come after the conviction of the Holy Spirit then your father will be able to make that decision for himself I don't say this to boast God's word is too powerful I have seen people come with an arrogant predisposition and just after hearing the word of the Lord in just about 20 minutes they started crying like babies their pride vanished didn't prophesy just preached the word of God just taught the word of God the Bible said for that I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ Romans chapter number 1 and 16 because the gospel is the power of God unto salvation to everybody who believes first to the Jew then to those of us the Gentiles the gospel is power but I'm looking at this that God sets his own rules Go back to the Exodus chapter 20. You know, and I have come to the place. Honor your father, honor your mother, that it shall be well with you. Go to the next verse. Interestingly, he said, thou shalt not kill. I call the murderers of J.B. Dankwa a doom. Vengeance if trust is after you. I'm calling the people who killed Fennec Ochre. You can play games with it, but my God will not rest until your wicked head goes into the grave i'm serious i'm talking to the people who killed the takra the girls and speaking to the people that killed the nine people at the past elections at techimai south i declare those soldiers or police you and the people that gave the orders and your wife and your husbands and your children will never know peace until the blood of those innocent men are vindicated 
I see a genesa in a British uniform. I will tell you, and you will have a proof that your vengeance belongs to him, and he only shall repay. Ubi Papa na mukunu no. Ubi Mami na mukunu no. And and this government have never even talked about it. Forget about your petty party nonsense. You killed nine people on the days of election. On the day of election, nine. Nobody talks about it. Thou shall not kill. You shall not kill. Let me even speak to the people who killed the generals and the judges. It will not be over until God says it's over. The people that give the command, the people who did not like the judges, the generals, the people who carried them to Bundase, the people who shot them, they said the woman judge had just given birth to a six-month-old baby. Diana, how can you be that heartless? The woman had a strong spirit. They shot her first. She didn't die. God has shot her the second time. She didn't die. Third time, she didn't die. Fourth time, she didn't die. On the fifth bullet, they poured petrol on her and ignited fire because they thought she was a witch and started burning a breastfeeding mother and you come and stand and tell me God bless our homeland Ghana no there is no blessing this is why you are buying one dollar is to 15 CDs when you are looking for a problem go to the roots Roots. When Kufor did the redenomination, one dollar was to one city. Where did we go wrong? Where did we go wrong? Now Ghanaians are hungry. Desperate. You have blood on your hands. Your flag has blood in it. And it is on every side. It is not only on one side. If it was just on one side, J.B. Dankwa, the politician, the, the original J.B. Dankwa, will not die in prison. Pettiness. Pettiness. Because somebody doesn't like him. Pettiness. And that bitterness of his children have lingered on to this day. And they are still fighting for their father. I heard a comment of one of the military people, his sons. Yesterday, or Saturday, no, yesterday, was two years exactly that President Rawlings was buried. But people have pains in their heart. I said, Ghana, there is blood on this thing. Obia was who a prophet a woman who is missing a near fra. Blood is on your flag. Yeah. Blood. Thou shall not kill. Thou shall not kill. Marco Fori, the MPP constituency chairman, died in his house. His, his wife was begging, please don't kill my husband. We have money. He said, we didn't come for money. They didn't take anything except one laptop. Left the money and shot Marco Fori nine times. What is it that somebody was covering? We want to know. What was it? Thou shall not kill. Marcus Sugakope. The assemblyman was shot in cold blood with police amnesia. The bullet that shot Marcus was coming from the police. The police gun that was from Sugakope police station got missing and reappeared at Sarpeman. Investigation showed 
that the, the gun was went missing, but into the hands of the murderers here the Mahain. I now know why police don't carry pistols like in America and in UK and all that. Every policeman in the, you know, the diaspora carries a pistol, a sidearm, just in case for emergencies. AK-47, How damn will you see the glory of Almighty God? How are you going to see the blessing? Make a way more air more dead. When we say killing, it's not only pulling a knife or a gun. When you can kill somebody with your mouth, when you can slander somebody with your mouth, that also is killing. I'm talking to the wise only. Thou shall not kill. You know, when we sit and talk about evidence and testimonies about each other, which are not the truth, you have already killed just that is murder just that is murder that is murder that is murder thou shall not kill put it on the screen let us work he goes the next further thing and talk about thou shall not commit adultery I won't talk about this because this is our number two problem in Ghana. The first is hypocrisy. That's who we are. Look at this of Angkor Road. Every time it rains, just little rain, the road flooded. I want to ask, to what point are we going to fix that nonsense? Kaswa. It rains and the rain pools, erosion pools, and, yeah, and blocks the road. This thing has been there for over 10 years. Don't we have any sensible hearted people who are in position and in place who can think? So I will not talk about adultery because all our leaders are adulterous. I didn't say, I am not missing words. We didn't, we didn't say, you know, I just missed my statement. I did not. All of our leaders are adulterers. No, not some. All. I didn't miss the English. Yeah, more and more and now you are adulterers. When we say adultery, we are not only talking about the moral adultery. The moment I have this microphone, you don't want, you have, I have this, you have the same. You don't want yours, you want mine. That's adultery. It does not only constitute to covetousness. You have an evil eye. And that constitutes to adultery. People bring cars here and people look at their cars car with here. We are here, you my man, or use a car with him, so don't go kill, sangro, fool, we know, I'm going to book of you, drove that, 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 that. That was an adulterous statement. The moment we've been here, when you're crazy, all they want to do is to loot. Why? And when we finish, we come and sit in the house of God. La, 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 higher. Interesting. Very interesting. We sleep in our boyfriend's house and come and receive communion. Worldliness! The world is in us. Because we don't see anything wrong with that. This is a conscienceless generation. We don't have a conscience. Our conscience is dead. Conscience is dead. I saw the demolition of the Ramsia site. They were pulling buildings down. I thought that if people have built in wrong places, those buildings must come down. It is the law of supporting my minister. Do the right thing. Three days after, the work stopped. One week after, news conference. We are regularizing everybody there. I said, really? What kind of hypocrisy will be that? You pull down Animal Research Institute, 200 plus houses, and regularize these ones. Someday, 
right is wrong. And this is why you will not like this voice because my assignment is to speak against injustice and anything that is unrighteousness. That is my job. That is my job. Honorable. God will judge you. God will judge you. The judgment of God will never miss your head. God will judge you. If you do that to A, do it to B. That is right. But when you start showing different treatment to people, judgment is looking for your head. When you are in such state, you are too being young. I'm telling you. The moment to be you be being now, your hands are clean. The Bible said the earth is the Lord. Some 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 24 and verse number one. And the, the, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. The world and them that dwell in He has founded it upon the waters and established it on, upon the flowers. He asks a question. Who shall stand in his holy place or holy hill or who shall stand in his holy place? And then he gives an answer. Everybody look at the answer. Read it together with me. Ready and go. He that have clean hands and a pure heart who has not lifted his soul unto vanity. No! Sworn deceitfully and then in the verse 5 he said he shall receive the blessing verse 4 verse 4 hear what I'm saying the reason is because their hands are full of blood he said it in Isaiah chapter 1 I'm going to close with that Isaiah chapter 1 when he said that particular thing. And then it, when he got to verse number 15. He said when, when you spread forth your hands. I will hide my eyes from you. Yea, when you make many prayers. I will not hear. Your hands are full of blood. I heard a Catholic priest from the you know, Catholic bishop conference. Made a plea to His Excellency President Akufuado last Thursday and said, Your Excellency, cut down your convoy. I have been yelling this for over six years now. Six years! To feel a diesel land cruiser now is 3,000, only one. Multiply it by, 30, by 62 in the presidential convoy. And tell me. What this nation is losing. When people come by food. It so saddens my heart. When I stand in my house. When my wife or my children. Anybody want to make a negative comment against a Kufuado. I said there will be no peace if you should make that statement. There will be no peace. Don't do it. My wife knows how. You know I will not tolerate anybody to make a negative statement. Then they can boldly sit out there and say, Aquano, Emisoye, NDC. I am defending you in my house. And I have 10 NDC. Because both of you, you are the same. You don't like truth. Both of you, you don't like truth. That is who you are. Ghana cannot stand when we have somebody who wants to bring order to character, to attitude, to conduct. Who wants to have real godliness in their heart and spirit? Not this kind of hypocrisy. heart by heart. Tell you that you are on your way to hell. Stand to your feet. Let's close.
the people that are bringing Brodie Bayere, they said the Abobo ya would be free with a more busy coin on five million. Abobo ya five billion. Why? Because petrol. Pull the camera here. I have a little request to the government. This time I'm not addressing a particular person. To the government. The people of Ghana are suffering too much. This is the time to bring back the subsidies that were on petroleum products. Government should pay 50% so that the people can be free until things are stabilized. That is what good leadership does. Number one. Number two. The benchmark value that is at the port must be removed until people are settled. Number three. Access must be reduced until we are settled. If this does not happen, the people are getting more angrier. Then they, when they rise, Mr. Government, you won't like it. I gave you godly counsel this morning. Please. Number one, subsidies. Two, Benchmark abolished. Three. Everybody. T, three. Taxes reduced. Until the people of Ghana are settled. And then we can bring all that back. To have the people to enjoy their life. <laughs> Old women cannot pay for prescriptions. As a a good leadership. Nestle Ghana Limited, the Nestle Ghana Limited, has given their product to their workers. Every worker's products were 7,500 CDs. Every worker. Milo, milk, needle, given to them for free just to help them to relax. When it was Corona, Rwanda gave stuff to their people. We can do it. The people are suffering too much. The people are suffering too much. My dear, they can't. You feel, say, hey. I'm not talking to the people. I'm not talking for the people who are in Accra. I'm talking for the people in my village who can't pay for anything. They cannot even pay for transport to the hospital. They die because they don't have money to go to the clinic. Those are the people I'm speaking for. The helpless, the vulnerable, 